Good morning, Willow students and families. Today in my morning gathering, I'm gonna share some music that was recorded by some of our middle school students. And what you guys just heard was an accompaniment from Bronwyn Raffian, um, who was playing the music for the intro. And I wonder if you guys recognize that tune. It was All God's Critters, love that song. So today we're gonna, to, when we are focusing on getting ready and being present, or do something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna be talking today about biophilia and our connection to nature. So I'm actually gonna play some background nature sounds. And for the next 30 seconds, I want you guys to close your eyes, take some deep breaths, and just focus on listening to those natural sounds. One more deep breath. So as I noted earlier, I'm gonna to talk today about this idea of biophilia. And this is a belief that helped to guide um, part of what makes Willow so special is Mark Bidron and Pearl Johnson were designing the school. This idea of our human connection to nature was really important in everything from how they designed our curriculum to how they designed the buildings and the daily schedule. So this word biophilia, if you break it apart, it really helps you to understand what it means. That first part, bio, um, refers to life. That small root means life in Greek. And then the other piece, philia, um, it's helpful to understand what the opposite of that is. So the word phobia is the opposite of a philia. So a phobia is our aversion or fear, whereas a philia is our attraction or positive feelings that we feel. And so biophilia, when they put those two pieces together, is our love or our attraction to our connection to life. And this is something that's really important for us. Um, it helps us to stay grounded, to stay connected, and to maintain that really important connection. So again, biophilia is that affiliation, that deep connection that we as humans feel for other animals and the natural world. And this is really ingrained in our biology. So as we've been at home, it's still really important to get out as much as possible and maintain that connection with nature. And so we, you know, as you know, it's really important for us on a daily basis when we're at school in Willow that we get out and play and that's why we have two recesses. But it's also important that you continue to do that when you're at home. And what we're going to be asking is that you start to share with us some of the ways that you're getting out and using that outdoor time, either to play or to connect with nature. And I'm going to share an example of something that my family has been doing. So as we've been a little bit more limited in being able to go to parks um, or to other natural areas, especially some natural and state parks as they've been closed because of social distancing, we've made it a daily occurrence that we go out for long walks in our neighborhood. And as we walk around our neighborhood, we've started to look at and try and identify something that's really special at this time of year. And those are flowering trees and shrubs that flower in the beginning of the spring. So this picture was actually taken in our front yard, and I hope that by the end of uh, me presenting that you will get to we'll be able to identify what tree it was that Lucy and I were looking at in our front yard. So now we'll share some trees that you will likely see if you're out and about either in your neighborhood or driving around in your car. These are some trees that, though they're not necessarily local or naturally occurring here, they are pretty frequently planted and, and easy to observe this time of year. 
So the first is the red bud, and this red bud has rosy pink flowers, and they appear in the early spring in April. It has reddish purple leaves that change to dark green and then to yellow in the fall. And as you can see from that picture of the full tree, it forms a spreading graceful crown. Another tree that you will see flowering at this time of year is the magnolia. And there are a couple of different varieties of magnolias. One that you'll see that's pretty common is the saucer magnolia. This is a small low branch tree with large saucer shaped flowers. That's where it gets its name. And they're very fragrant and bloom in the early spring. Their flowers are white, but shaded with light to dark pink or purplish pink. And they have big broad leaves that grow in after the trees bloom and the smooth bark that silvery gray. Another tree that you'll see blooming at this time of year is the dogwood. And the dogwood, as you can see there from the pictures, can be either pink or white. Um, and they again bloom in the early spring and their foliage, their leaves turns to a vibrant red purple in the fall and it grows glossy red fruits that attract birds, uh, songbirds over the winter. This is the flowering crab apple, which you can see has some similarities to that red bud, but a, a different shape um, and different flowers that, that bloom. So these can be dark pink to red and they actually last a really long time. This is one of the longer lasting of the blooming trees. Its foliage or its leaves are glossy maroon or purplish red in the spring and then become dark green with red veins in the summer. Um, and then ultimately turn a beautiful bronze color in the autumn. This is a very um, prominent tree. You'll see this tree um, pretty frequently, um, and often these are not naturally occurring or um, fruit-bearing trees. So this is actually a flowering pear tree. Um, and this is one of the trees that blooms really early on and is covered with small one and a half inch to three inch blossoms that grow in clusters. And again, this is a pretty common tree. This is something that a lot of cities or, um, or suburban subdivisions planted um, as they were planting trees to have something that grew quickly and also flowered. So keep your eye out for these flowering pear trees. And then here you'll see the cherry blossom. And there are a couple of different types of cherry blossoms, some that are fruit bearing trees. So those are flowering cherry trees, but um, often we'll also see this variety. This is what you'll find down in DC, which is the Japanese flowering cherry. And this one doesn't actually grow edible fruits, though it does grow small red berries. Um, and its blossoms can be uh, white pink or dark pink. Uh, and it has a faint almond smell when it blooms in the spring. Um, and this tree um, is known for having an oriental branching pattern, which you can see in that picture. It has glossy bark and dark green leaves. And finally, another really common, um, this is actually a shrub, not a tree, is the forsythia. And this has a profusion of yellow blossoms that cover um, the, all of its branches and it blooms in the early spring. And it's just a beautiful, vibrant, um, punch of color out in the landscape. So as you are out and walking in parks or walking in your neighborhood, please keep an eye out for these different trees and see if you can identify some of the same ones that we've seen in our neighborhood. And as I said earlier, um, we're actually gonna be sharing some music from our middle schoolers. So today leading us in song will be Cameron and Vilan Chin, who have recorded a song for us to sing with them. And it's the garden song. Someone warned them from below. 
have a wonderful day and thank you for our musicians for providing the music for this morning gathering.